in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, we are here celebrating this very special Sunday of Divine Mercy, and we will ask our Lord to increase our trust and love for Him, that we may receive His mercy and everything He has gained for us on the cross. And we will offer this Holy Mass in a very special way for Maria Auxiliadora, a friend that is uh, undergoing right now some uh, health issues and, 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 and battles, but she's been so brave, and we will pray that God will continue to fortify her and bring her peace and her whole family as well, and healing graces on the, this Divine Mercy Sunday. And also, uh, we will offer the Mass for the soul of Juan Ramon Marquez. And as we begin to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and trusting in His mercy. Let us begin by recalling in our sins and asking our Lord for His forgiveness and peace and His mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The communion of believers was one of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and a great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The Word of the Lord. We will respond, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, 
His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was fallen, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nail in his hand, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands, and bring your hands and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, 
and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have come to this great celebration of the divine mercy that we celebrate every second Sunday of Easter, in which we celebrate the love and the mercy that Jesus has shown uh, for us through his cross and resurrection to give us new life, and we pray that we trust and believe in this. But to really understand this celebration in, in a very in the way that we need to, it is important for us also to look at the big picture here. First of all, we have to remember that ever since sin entered uh, our lives, ever since the the sin of the first human beings it, and and the pride uh, that that entered into our thoughts and. and in our hearts came into our lives something and we see this in the book of Genesis what started to happen immediately is that our view of God became distortion so basically because of our own sinfulness and because we see the darkness in ourselves in others in authority figures and so on we as human beings through the ages began to distort that view and place that very distorted view on our loving God who has created all we have beginning with our lives out of his love and mercy and of course also we have the sufferings of this world that we are living and that we have always lived either individually or globally and we also when we distort that view, may blame him, and instead of, of knowing that he allows everything for our own good, and that most of the problems that we face as well are not because of his design, but because of our own mistakes and sins. So we have to realize how this has been the case throughout the history of humanity, and let's think about humanity at this moment. There is approximately, ever since the first human beings came in, into the world as we are with our souls, not just, you know, our evolved bodies and so on, but also the human soul, uh, as we know it with mind and heart in the image of God, it's approximately 200,000 years uh, have, uh, since God uh, gave us this life. And we have to put that into perspective when we think about the moment in which the Heavenly Father sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to become human and be born amongst us and die on the cross and resurrect so that we may have new life and that we can come to know the love of the Father. So first of all, let's think about that. If humanity is around the way that we, we are, around 200,000 years old, and, and Jesus came 2,000 years old, that very much so puts him in our era. If we think about this, put into perspective, it's as if something started in the year 1820, and now we are in the year 2020, and we're, we're talking about an event that happened in the year 2018. Obviously, we would say, Whatever happened in 2018 is very much in our time frame and very much far away from any other time frame. Uh, it's as close as we can get, really. Uh, it's it's in, 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 in this time. So even though it's 2,000 years, it's still, if we look at the big picture in our time, especially if we add the unknown, which is how much we have left in our humanity here on Earth, which we don't know, it could be uh, today, it could be a million years, it could be until God decides. So the thing is that what we have to realize is that this whole amazing miracle that God sent us to, uh, for us to, to re receive new life and to get to know His love is something that's new. 
and the apostolic mission of giving the good news to the world that Jesus has come to live amongst us to bring us that love is something that is still very much in the process of beginning to happen. And we have to realize that through that, there are going to be the, there's going to be a lot of great things happening and as they have in these 2000 years. And there's also going to be a lot of unbelief and a continued distortion of the way that we perceive this. And we have seen it throughout history. We see it literally as we just saw in the same gospel in the very first week since Christ uh, resurrected. We see Thomas, who represents so many of us, that he was told, he was being told by his friends that they saw the risen Christ and he still did not believe them. Even though he knew Jesus and had seen his miracles and had heard his promises, he didn't believe until he saw them. And so he saw him face to face and, and touched his marks of the, of the nails on his hands and on his side where uh, blood and water flowed. And he, Jesus tells him, blessed are those that believe and trust in me even if they have not seen him, which, was what, which is what we all hope also that we come to be. So in the same way that has been what has happened for these last 2000 years, and so many have come to believe and come to receive the life of Christ. And we have so many witnesses of that, and not just the canonized celebrated saints, but all those, uh, all, all, all those so many souls filled with love and, and with hope and with trust in God, despite the many sufferings that have been living in their lives, that have been part of their lives uh, individually and through the ages. We, we see uh, the heroic efforts of mercy that we see is, uh, so much throughout this pandemic, for example, that is living the life of Christ in our, in our lives. But at the same time, there's also the darkness of the world, the, the living the world in the world, act, like acting like if we are our own gods, or, uh, or basically just blaming all that's wrong with the world on Him. And sometimes, that can happen with, within, obviously, the very same, with our very church. And sometimes we can have distortion in the views of God. And we have to know a little important history lesson here. One of the greatest ones that we have faced, uh, which was a big heresy, which was a, basically a, a big lie, uh, something that was taught uh, to the people on behalf of the church, by a few people, and even though it wasn't the truth, uh, happened some centuries ago, and we can say, well, that happened 400 years ago almost, and, and we can all, but at the same time, we are still living the consequences of this. And that's, I want to share this with you, because then this great feast comes very much into the perspective of why it's so important. So around the, in the year, uh, 1600s in the 17th century, there was this uh, priest uh, called Jansen, Father Jansen, and he was the spiritual director to the nobility in France, where he basically ran the retreat house, where all the nobility would come and, and do their spiritual retreats in all the luxury that they lived in at the same time during that time. And it was a time also in which they wanted, there was so much into showing off, whether it's worldly goods and even spiritual goods. They wanted to show off uh, that they were better than other people. And so this priest began to teach something that was all about God being a God that, that is vengeful, that is always looking out to see the moment in which we mess up so that he can punish us, a God that is basically a God of fire and brimstone. And unfortunately, because this was taught by the nobility, to the nobility, who took it in because it was one more thing that they could to, do to like just feel superior, they went to their churches all over France and told the bishops, look, this is happening. And, and so they convinced that this is the, really the way to look at, at the message of God, of the gospel. 
And even though the Vatican immediately within those years said, no, this has nothing to do with the uh, God, the Heavenly Father that Jesus has revealed to us, it was too late. Because by that moment, so many priests were teaching it from the pulpits to the common people, to, to the, the grassroots, uh, to the folk, and, and it, it spread. And it became the new way of living out the religion. And of course, uh, children that were sitting in the pews learning that from the priests and their parents and so on, then became priests and nuns and continued it all the more. And before we know it, we knew it, this heresy became, uh, it spread like wildfire throughout Europe, which of course was going to affect the rest of the world as the European church came into the Americas and so on. And despite this, of course, Jesus concerned first, a few years after this, Jesus came and appeared to, uh, and came and revealed himself to St. Margaret Mary Alicofue, where we have the devotion of the Sacred Heart, which is basically him telling us, I love you, trust in my love, trust in this love, trust in me. And, and, and then, of course, uh, she had her writings, and, and somehow it, it spread, but not enough to where it, it would overtake the Jansenism. Uh, movement. Then we had other great saints like like Saint Alphonsus the Cor. He, he was a great bishop who talked all about God's love and mercy. We have Saint Therese of Lisieux, uh, the little flower, who taught us the great uh, journey to come to God through basically being like children and complete surrender to Him and trusting Him like a child who trusts his loving parents. And, and, and we go on, and then, but we still, and if we add so many other problems to the whole mix, like it's just in the whole times in which they thought that it was all science and no God, and so on and so on, and it was all intermixed, one thing led to the other, because no one wanted to deal with a God that, that was basically uh, so spiteful, so basically it was a mess. And and then uh, and then we so when then we have Jesus still trying, he, and he appears in the 1930s to Saint Faustina, a, a very humble nun, in which he comes and says, "Trust in my mercy. That's what I want the most is for all of you to trust in me that I love you. How can you think I'm I'm vengeful if I have come to die?" on the cross for you and, and bring you new life. Well, what more do you want from me to show and prove that, that God loves you? And, and so she wrote everything down and, and taught and did everything that Jesus told her. That was, we have to remember this, World War II came and so on. That became into obscurity for a while, her diary, until the Bishop of Krakow uh, uh, read it and he was so moved by this because someone had to see whether this was something to be believed or not and he was so moved and then this Bishop of Krakow uh, called Carol Wojtyla then became John Paul II, the Pope. And he becoming the Pope in the 1970s then was able to bring this, this writings of the Divine Mercy into the world and, and finally even instituting this feast that we are celebrating today on the second Sunday of Easter as Jesus asked St. Faustina in the 1930s to be the great celebration of his divine mercy. And so the, the mission goes on in, 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 in for us to come to believe in the true God and in his love and to stop thinking about that, that vengeful distance Called God that has ingrained into our into our uh, culture, in, in, in especially in the culture of the church, and we can say we are better uh, in some ways. Although, of course, now there's so much uh, just lack of faith and so on, and and and, con and just distraction that we don't. So in some ways, we're even less thinking about God, but in other ways, uh, we have to re realize that just a hundred years ago, there was a lot of reasons, that one of the main reasons that people were uh, doing a lot of the practices was out of fear and not faith, and that's, that wasn't getting much done either. 
So we have this great celebration to remind us of that, to remind us that Jesus has come to reveal his love and his mercy to us all. So basically, in a very important way, this, on this day, what we have to do, what Jesus is asking us to do, is to let ourselves be loved by him. This is a, a day in which we have to remember that immense piece of the puzzle, of, uh, not the puzzle, but the formula of, of, of love and the, and the whole, and the whole, what makes love real is that we have to also let ourselves be loved in order to truly love. So if we remember that the greatest commandments are to love God before, beyond everything else and then to love our neighbor as ourselves, for that to actually be a, a possibility that is real, we have to let ourselves be loved as well. Because if we do not let Jesus love us and we're not trusting in his love and in his forgiveness and in the peace that he wants to give us and all the good things that he wants to put into our souls and then to give us everlasting life when he calls us uh, from this life to, uh, through our death, then there's no way we can really love him back because we're not letting our souls and our hearts be filled with his love first. And we need that to really love him and to love our neighbors as we are invited to. And he has, he, the, he, he's pouring all of his graces upon us and all we have to do is to open our trust in him and let them all in. We have to know and remember that Jesus throughout the Gospels, he, he teaches us this, not by words only, but also by his own person. He made himself dependent on others so that he may show us to, uh, the importance of, of, being the ne of the necessity to receive others' love. We see it from the beginning, from the first uh, moment that he depended completely on our Blessed Mother Mary to give him his humanity and then to be a loving mother that gave him birth and then, and then uh, took, raised him with all her love. Saint Joseph, who he depended on to protect him, we even in we go back to his his days of his birth. We even he even uh, was a, was receiving the gift of of the mule and the ox when they were breathing warmth into into him, keeping him warm on that night, that cold night in December in Bethlehem. And then we see throughout the gospel when he receives water from the woman at the well, when he asks Jesus if he can stay in his house, if he can use his boat. When he asks, when, when he goes uh, before his great miracles even, like for example the multiplication of the loaves, he asks for a couple of fishes and, and some loaves of bread from this little boy in order to make this huge miracle that of course he could have done out of thin air. Let's not even uh, for, begin to forget the way that he received love and from others in his passion. For example, when he uh, when he let the Veronica wipe his, uh, him with the cloth and all the blood and, and sweat, when he let Simon of Cyrene carry the cross, uh, help him carry the cross to Calvary, then even after his death, he accepted the tomb of Saint Joseph of Arimathea, and and then once he risen, he still was asking uh, for others to help him. He said, "I'm hungry." They gave him. Uh, uh, they gave him some fish to to eat in one of the apparitions of the resurrected Christ, and 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 now he is asking us something that he wants from each one of us, which is our trust in him. He's asking us for this gift so that then he can give us back the gift of himself to us and fill us with that love and and fill us with the humility that we need that love in order to really have the life that we are meant to have. And so that is what this, this day is all about, is to letting God love us and, and, and to know that we are dependent on His love as we are dependent on the love of others so that we can then love in return because that is the only way that love is real. When it's a, a, just a relationship and, and, and it's a give and a take that comes naturally, it's a flow. And, and, and it's not about one saying, I'm the, one, I'm the giver here, because that can be prideful, or, I, or, 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 or also 
uh, I'm, I'm not going to receive anything. I don't want to ask anything because that can be prideful too. Or we don't want to, and, and also when someone only wants to receive and not give, that can be also selfish and so on. The only way true love exists with God and with one another is by giving and receiving. Being open to receiving and being open to giving. And that is the love that we're meant to have. That is true love. And that, of course, is the love that Jesus is inviting us to have with him. So let us ask this day for that grace that our trust in him increases, that our love for him uh, is received in all its fullness, and, and that we really uh, begin to be one of those blessed that believes in him, even if we have not seen him, and, and come to be this instrument of his mercy and this and the good use of the resurrection in this world. God bless you. And now let us pray, let us uh, pray to our Lord and let us first say uh, what we believe in and to increase our belief. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell on the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us ask our Heavenly Father to help us with all of our needs. Let us pray for our church that as we continue the mission of spreading the good news of the gospel, that we may truly do it in the right way and, and that we may truly believe it in the right way and, and that we may be a light, that the church may be a light, everyone doing their part in this world that needs it so much. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for peace in the world, for peace in every nation, in every family, in every heart, that by trusting in God's mercy and being filled with his love, the peace that comes from it may abound. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for an increase of faith, especially when we are seeing ourselves in moments of darkness and unbelief, when we are doubting uh, God's love, when we don't see His, His presence in our midst, when we feel abandoned, that we may increase our faith and know that God will always give us the grace that we need and everything that he has planned for us and, and, and then eternal life is already uh, for our taking. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all who are sick. We, are, we especially pray for all who are suffering right now from the coronavirus. We pray for all that we have promised our prayers to. We pray for those who are concerned about financial difficulties and, 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 and suffering through that or, or, or just loneliness. We pray for all those who are not feeling loved at this moment. We pray for everyone that we promise our prayers to each day. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray for all who have died, especially for the soul of Juan Ramon, and we pray for all who will die this day, and for all the souls in purgatory, especially priests in purgatory, we pray that they may all be rejoicing in the love of heaven that Jesus has gained for us. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have loved us so much that you have sent us Jesus to show us that love and to bring us that mercy that we so much need. We ask you to increase our faith and to, and to take away our unbelief so that we may truly see that love and trust in that love every moment of our lives so that we may also truly love you and one another with that. 
We ask you to help us with this and with all of our needs, which we present to you each day in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of his hands for the good and hope in, in, of his name and for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that on when St. John Paul II instituted this, uh, this feast day the celebration of Divine Mercy at the request of Jesus Christ himself, St. Faustina, an indulgence was given, and for in, in, when we come to Mass on this day and, and we and attend Mass, and usually for an indul well for an indulgence to take effect, we not only have to ask for the indulgence and, and be open to it, or, or for a soul in purgatory, but we also have to receive communion and go to confession within eight days. But because of what we're living, of course, right now, uh, it's all spiritual. Uh, in, in the confession and the communion. So we remember what confession right now, uh, we're trusting God's mercy and if we say a perfect act of contrition, basically that we really are telling God that we are sorry for our sins and then have the intention to go to confession as soon as possible, then, that, then we are open to His mercy and then also of course, and when we receive spiritual communion, when we welcome Him into our into our souls, even if we are not receiving him sacramentally, that also, of course, is a communion. So at this moment, so that, that if we do that, then we get the indulgence. And also let us remember to pray the chaplet of the divine mercy this day, and always that we remember. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And let us ask our Blessed Mother to help us to increase our trust in the love and mercy of our Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.